Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, it gives me great pleasure uh, to address you on the pre-summit uh, for transforming education. I would like to uh, address first the situation in Palestine. In Palestine, we've been engaged for quite a while, for three years already, in a structural reform agenda that touches on the governance of the education system, the structure of the system, we're adjusting the structure, so it's more agile, more responsive, more transparent, and more efficient. It also touches on curriculum. We're setting up a new national center for curriculum. Assessment, we're revising the way we do assessment for schools and for school exit and college entry, as well as the establishment of quality assurance system, because like higher education, public education requires that we agree on the outcomes, desired outcomes of education, learning outcomes, social, emotional, cultural outcomes. So we have set up a quality assurance unit in the ministry. Uh, we have uh, focused on the decentralization, what we call prudent decentralization, supported by a major thrust on digitization, because dig digitization will support good governance and will make the system again more agile and more responsive and so forth. So in Palestine, we're pushing that, and the heart of this is the student. We always say for a long time that the student is the locus of the whole learning process, but we need to actually make this real. So we have a whole suite of uh, measures and uh, programs to actually under, underscore that the teacher will remain at the center. Uh, we have uh, managed in different ways to uh, engage our students in the transformation uh, because we believe we cannot do it alone. We need to leverage a national partnership that will carry the transformation. And we have mobilized uh, NGOs, uh, CBOs, government agencies, universities, all universities in Palestine, uh, teachers' unions, parents' unions, and uh, student parliaments. So we have a, an inclusive national partnership that will carry the transformation. Uh, besides, we're talking about uh, the domestic financing. In Palestine, as you know, the situation is not normal, far from it. We're under occupation. Our resources are basically not under our control. The Israeli occupation controls most of the business, commerce, export, import, land uh, utilization, water, and so forth. So it's important that we're innovative about uh, availing resources for uh, supporting education. And the particular reason in Palestine or TILT is that Palestine's education is unique in many ways because it is linked to who we are, the DNA of a Palestinian, the identity, the narrative, and the future. So we cannot risk not being able to support a sovereign education system. We have come up with a creative arrangement whereby we have the community adopt our schools. So we have a massive, large-scale school adoption program where the community actually took over, and now already 1,500 schools are taken care of by local uh, philanthropists, business, uh, community leaders for five years to come. Uh, we have made legislation uh, on the education tax, so we multiply our return from tax, education tax, again to support domestic financing. For the te teaching profession, we have just passed uh, a law uh, that will actually uh, uh, elevate the status of teachers, uh, moral, financial, administrative, and professional. And that's called Nidam Mihnat al Talim. That would be a historical junction, uh, in, as a matter of fact. Now, uh, in Palestine, the issue is, uh, and actually for the whole summit, we have a situation. Now, you may say 
that countries will commit, and we will sign and commit. The problem is you have externalities that are beyond your control. In Palestine, our commitment is solid. However, the limitations and impediments imposed by the occupation are hard facts and real on the ground day in, day out. So when we talk about, for example, safe and inclusive schools, how can we do that when the Israeli army settlers are daily incursions and attacks on schools, teachers and the school community? So I'm saying that it's really important to factor in externalities like that when you talk about national commitments to the SDG and to the uh, transformation. Now, uh, I would like to um, talk about the, something more general, which is the summit. I heard the interventions uh, this morning and yesterday, and I actually believe that one of the major challenges is finding creative ways of factoring in the voices of children, non-trivial but doable. In fact, we have developed a toolkit uh, called the Voice of Children Toolkit that will systematically uh, inform the system about students' perspe perspectives about their learning environment, different aspects of learning. Uh, what they learn, how they learn, the school environment, how safe they feel, etc. And the second issue is universality. I believe it is time to develop a common, a core universal curriculum, of course with a margin for adaptability nationally in exact sciences, natural sciences, uh, IT, and moreover, one core curriculum on what we can call our common humanity. So planetary citizenship can actually be uh, highlighted and can be mainstreamed globally uh, through such a curriculum. Um, I uh, wish you all the best. Uh, I would like to reaffirm Palestine's commitment uh, to the agenda and to the goals and commitments of the summit uh, and we will sign on that in September. Thank you so much.